Hello learners, welcome to environmental science course of NIOS. I am Neelam Gupta, course coordinator of environmental science. Welcome you in this program. As you have learned in the previous program that there are two types of ecosystem that is terrestrial and aquatic. We have already discussed about the terrestrial ecosystem in our previous program. We will discuss aquatic ecosystems, ecosystems of India and threatened ecosystems during the program. For this discussion, we have with us Dr. Lakshmi Nirula, retired associate professor from SGTB Khalsa College, University of Delhi. Welcome you ma'am. Thank you Neelam. In this present, I shall be discussing with you about the aquatic ecosystems, the ecosystems of India and the threatened ecosystems. As you all know that the tropics of cancer, which is the boundary between the tropics and the subtropics, passes through the middle of India. Therefore, it can be regarded as a tropical country climatically. India has an extraordinary variety of climatic regions ranging from tropical in south to temperate and alpine in the Himalayan northern regions where the elevated regions receive sustained winter snowfall. The nation's climate strongly is influenced by the Himalayas and the Thar deserts. The objectives of this lesson are that after going through it, you shall be able to Describe the various aquatic ecosystems such as freshwater, marine and natural. Know about the major Indian ecosystems, know about the threatened ecosystems and explain the need and the methods of conservation of the natural ecosystems. Now what is an ecosystem? As we have already studied an ecosystem which can be divided into two types aquatic and terrestrial. The aquatic ecosystem are in the body of water. The two main types of aquatic ecosystems are marine and freshwater ecosystems. The third type that is an estuary is a condition which is in between the two types of water bodies. These are the three different types of ecosystems, the freshwater, estuarine and marine. The freshwaters are inland water bodies without or negligible salinity. Marine biome has a saline water and is very deep. Estuaries are in between two biomes with a variable salinity. There are three basic types of freshwater ecosystems, lentic, slow moving water bodies including pools, ponds and lakes, lotic, fast moving water bodies for example streams and rivers. The third type is wetland areas where the soil is saturated with water or covered with water for at least a part of the year. This you have already seen the picture in the previous program also an aquatic ecosystem of fresh water showing the various components that is the fauna and flora which is influenced by the region in which it is existing. The marine biome is covering nearly 71% of the earth's surface and it contains nearly 99% of the habitable space on the planet. The marine biome is the largest in the world and is located in five oceans namely the Arctic, Antarctic, Indian, Pacific and Atlantic along with some of the smaller gulfs and bays as shown in this picture. This figure is showing marine biomes containing the five main oceans. The marine biome can be divided into three zones, the intertidal zone, open ocean and the abyssal zone. Marine biome is basically differentiated on the basis of salinity which is nearly 3.6% in a quite and is quite constant. The temperature variation is much less in the sea than on the land. The hydrostatic pressure is due to the water column and that increases with the depth of the ocean. It is one atmosphere at the surface and is about 1000 atmosphere at the greatest depth. Near the surface oceans are warmer as you get closer to the equator and as it is 
and it becomes colder as we go closer to the polar regions. Even though the climate does not affect the marine biome, but conversely, it does affect the land climate a lot. The tides in the oceans are due to the gravitational pull of the moon. Its currents affect the coastal areas. Another way the marine biome affects the coastal areas are the winds. Depending upon the temperature of the water, the winds usually take their direction. The maximum diversity of the marine organisms is found in the tidal zone near the shore and that is why this is also known as a cradle of evolution because there is a lot of competition for the survival in the tidal zone. The animals in the deeper layers are adapted to the high pressures. Some of the marine organisms such as the sperm whales, certain seals can dive to a great depth and swim back to the surface without difficulty. Now let's learn about the biomes of the India. As already stated, the first important type of biomes are forests which are widely spread all over the country. They can be classified as the tropical rainforest, tropical deciduous forest, temperate broad leaf forest, temperate needle leaf or the coniferous forest and alpine and tundra forests. The other type of terrestrial biomes are grassland, deserts, mountains, ghats and of course aquatic ecosystems as we have just now discussed the freshwater and the marine biomes. The tropical rainforests are found within the rainy slopes of the western ghats, plains of West Bengal, Orissa, northeastern India and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. At high altitude, they are found in the northeastern stretches stretching from northern Assam to Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura and part of Arunachal Pradesh. Most of this region is at an altitude of about 900 meters. These places have plenty of rainfall and sunshine throughout the year. The growth of the trees is at best at its best rainfall when it is nearly 200 centimeters. In these forests, the trees grow very briskly and attain a height of 60 meters and above. These forests with wide have a wide variety of species and are a great resource and also provide many other services to the mankind. Ebony, mahogany and rosewood are the main trees found in these forests. The mammals in these rainforests include sloth, kotai, rodent, bat, peccaries and flying squirrels. They are also the home for cats such as jaguar, ocelot, civets and jagondrin. Amazon parrot, cows, pheasants and grosbeaks are among the many other species of brightly plumaged birds very commonly found in these forests. A large number of insects who enjoy the forest flow are ants and in large colonies of termites, catadet, walking sticks, butterflies, wasps, spider, beetles and cicadas. Green coloring and veined four wing help catadet insects to easily disguise themselves among the leaves in the forest to protect themselves from the attack of predators. These forests are also called as the monsoon forests and form a natural cover approximately all over India within a region having 200 to 75 centimeter of annual rainfall. They are found in the state of Kerala, eastern slopes of western Ghats and also in the northeastern parts of peninsular Plateau and in the valley of Himalayas. The tropical deciduous forests are very sensitive to the fires. These forests can be divided into two types, the moist deciduous forests and the dry deciduous forests. The moist deciduous forests are found on the eastern ghats, Chota Nagpur Plateau, eastern parts of Madhya Pradesh, South Bihar, West Orissa and Shivaliks. The dry deciduous forests are found in the regions that receive precipitation between 70 to 100 centimeters. 
as the dry season begins, the trees of the deciduous forest shed their leaves completely. Tandu, polans, amaltas, bale, khair, axelwood, etc. are the major trees of the deciduous forest. In this map, you can see the, where exactly the dry and wet deciduous forests are located. This is a picture showing South Dakkan Plateau of deciduous forests. The common animals as you can see are elephants along with the dogwood and the sloth bear. They mainly occur between 1500 to 2400 meter altitude in the western Himalayas. Several species of oak are found in these forests which are evergreen trees. The deciduous trees show peak leaf fall during summer but they never become leafless. The tree canopy is dense, height of the trees may be between 25 to 30 meters. Herbaceous layer is least developed, there are no grasses. Oak forests are often rich in epiphyte flora. The alpine forests grow at an altitude above 3600 meter usually and they can be, it is noticed that as the altitude increases, there is a decreased or stunted growth of the plants. Now the other important bio or the ecosystem of India is grasslands. In India, grasslands are found as village grazing grounds called gaucha and extensive low pasture of dry regions of western parts of the country. The perennial grasses are the dominant plant community. In some regions, the grasslands also support a variety of other herbaceous plants like sedges, legumes and members of the sunflower family. Grasslands support a large number of herbivore fauna from minute insects to very large mammals such as rat, mice, rodent, deer, elephant, dog, buffalo, tiger, lion, ferret are some common mammals of the grassland. In northeast India, one horned rhinoceros is almost the threatened animal of the grasslands and the government is taking measures to protect it. A large number of avian fauna is found to make this grassland colorful. This is the picture of dry grassland of peninsular India and it supports a vast proportion of agro-pastoralist community. They are also a home of critically endangered species such as the Indian bastard and lesser floricans. The other endangered endemic mammalian species of the grassland are Indian wolf, Indian fox and black buck. Now we come to the next important biome of India that is the deserts. The Indian de deserts are divided into three main types, the cold mountain deserts of Trans Himalayas, the white salt deserts of Kutch, the sandy deserts of Rajasthan as you can see in these pictures. These deserts can also be classified on the basis of their location, they are hill they are plains with hills, plains with sand dunes and the marshes. The distinct run of Kutch in Gujarat forms a separate zone within the Thar deserts due to its differentiation of the climatic condition. It represents vast saline flats. The region of sand dunes is most spectacular and covers an area of 1 lakh square kilometers nearly. It extends into Pakistan. The dunes are highly sandy and contain 0.12 to 0.18 millimeter size grain and 1.8 to 4.8 percent clay and 0.4 to 1.3 of silt. The Indian gazelle, also known as Chinkara is inhabitant of the desert. Gazelle is just over 2 feet in height and weighs around 50 pounds. Chinkara has buff colored coat with dark stripes and in the corner of the eyes to the muzzle. The horns are more than two feet long. These are the adaptations of gazelles. Another common bird which is found in the deserts of India is a large ground dwelling bird 
which is approximately 3.5 feet tall and weighs around 30 pounds. This is the bustard and it has a long neck and primarily it feeds on grasses, insects, rats and seeds in the grassland. Now important ecosystems of India which are also known as the hotspots of India also. These are western and eastern ghats. As you can see in this map, the western ghats are towards the west of India and the eastern ghats are in the discontinuous belt towards the east of India. Western ghats are also known as Shahedri and extend from Tapti river in the north to Kanyakumari in south covering nearly 1.4 lakh square kilometer parallel to the west coast of peninsular India. They pass through the states of Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. The rainfall may be between 100 to 500 centimeters in these regions. The soil is mainly red or black. Most of this region is rich in nutrients. These ghats are one of the richest biological resource and are very important hotspots of the world. They contain 3500 species of the flowering plants and out of which 1500 species are endemic here. There are nearly 209 species of fresh water fishes and on these ghats out of which 120 species are endemic. Similarly, out of 219 species of amphibians found over here, 106 are endemic species. This picture is the mountain of western ghats which are not like the snow peaks of Himalayas, but they are very rich in biodiversity and have an impressive array of wildlife. Now, we come to the eastern ghats which are also known as the Purvi ghats. They extend from north, south, west and strike up to the Indian peninsula covering approximately 75,000 square kilometer area. They are spread through the states of Odisha, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. These eastern ghats do not form a continuous large range because the great rivers like Mahanadi, Godavari and Krishna cut across them. They are an assemblage of discontinuous ranges of hills, plateaus and basins. The climate of these ghats may be semi-arid or semi-humid with a rainfall of 60 to 160 centimeters. The vegetation of these ghats is evergreen trees to dry savannas. The eastern ghats are affected by the human activities. The conservation of biodiversity here is a big issue today. The special measures are taken to protect the floristic zone in the eastern ghats. Mangrove ecosystems are very interesting natural ecosystems of India. They are sensitive to misuse by the human activity and the natural disaster or the calamities. The human activities which threaten these ecosystems are pollution, loss of habitat, transport mechanisms and so on. The natural disasters which affect them are the sudden natural accidents events that cause the damage to them as well as even to the human life in these regions. Tsunamis, earthquakes, landslides, volcanic eruptions, cyclones are some of the devastating natural disasters affecting the mangrove ecosystems. The mangrove represent a characteristic littoral region. These forests grow in sheltered low-lying coast estuaries, mudflats, tidal creeks, backwaters, water held back on the marshes and lagoons and tropical and subtropical regions. They are distributed over east and west coast of island of Andaman and Nicobar. Since the mangroves are located between the land and the sea, they represent the best example of an ecotone. Sundarban mangrove forests represent one of the hotspots of India and are a region that show the maximum biodiversity, richness of species and endemic forms. These ecosystems are threatened 
basically due to the human interference. The mangrove forests include a diverse composition of trees and shrubs. The plants are well adapted to high salinity, resistant to the tidal effect, tolerant to the high temperature. Roots bear pneumatophores to help them in aeration. Mangroves are highly productive ecosystems and the trees may vary in height from 8 to 20 meters. They protect the shoreline from the effect of cyclones and tsunamis. Mangroves along the east coast are most luxuriant and considerably diverse. Due to the presence of nutrients rich deltas, they are formed by the river Ganges, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. Now, Estuaries are also a different type of though quite small ecosystem of India. Estuaries and the surrounding wetlands are the bodies of water usually found where the rivers meet the sea. Estuaries are a home of unique plant and animal communities that are adapted to the brackish water that is a mixture between the fresh water and the marine water. Islands are also one type of ecosystem. They are the land masses surrounded by seawater from all the sides. They may be far from the continents called oceanic island or they may be close to the mainland and they are called as the continental islands. The two continental islands of India are Andaman and Nicobar in the Bay of Bengal, Lakshdweep in Arabian Sea. The islands are threatened ecosystem mainly due to the habitat destruction, resources and tourism. Although the industrial pollution is much less on the islands, oil spills in the oceans have greatly affected the fauna and flora of islands. Many endemic species such as the turtles, birds have been threatened to extinction on the islands. The government is taking special measures to protect these islands. Now we come to a mid zone which is known as ecotone. It is used several times in my this program. So it is a very important component when we are doing or we are studying about the natural ecosystems. An ecotone is a zone of junction between two or more diverse ecosystems. For example, mangrove forests represent an ecotone between marine and terrestrial banks. Some more examples of ecotone are grassland, estuary and river banks. The ecotone may be very wide or very narrow. The conditions are in between the two adjacent ecosystems, hence ecotone is a zone of tension. It is a linear shows progressive increase in the species composition of upcoming community and simultaneously a decrease in the species of other outgoing adjoining community. A well developed ecotone contains some organisms which are entirely different from both the adjoining communities. Sometimes the number of species or the population density of these species in the ecotone is much more than in the adjoining communities. This is known as the edge effect. The organisms which occur primarily or most abundantly in this zone are called as the edge species. In the terrestrial ecosystem, the edge effect is specially applicable to the birds. For example, the density of Songbirds increases in the ecotone zone between the forest and the deserts. According to Norman Meyer, a hotspot is an area that has a large number of endemic species of plants that is more than 1500 and it must be suffering from the habitat loss. Most of the species of animals and plants found here are endemic. 35 biodiversity Hotspots have been identified around the world, although they make only less than 2.5% of the surface, a large portion of these species in these zones are found only within them and they are known as the endemic species. Now the hotspots of India or the adjoining regions are the Himalayas that include the entire Indian Himalayan regions, land falling in the Pakistan, Tibet, Nepal, Bhutan, China and Myanmar. Indo-Burman region includes the entire northeastern India except Assam, Andaman groups of island and Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia and South China.
Sundarbans include Nicoba, group of islands, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei and Philippines. The Western Ghats and Sri Lanka include the entire Western Ghats in, and Sri Lanka. Now since we have studied so much about the threats to the ecosystems all over the biosphere as well as in India, ecosystem management is very important. What do we mean by it? Ecosystem management is the process that aims to conserve the major ecological services and restore the natural ecosystems while meeting the socio-economic, political and cultural needs of the current and future generations. Sacred forests, sacred lakes are protected by the tribal communities due to the religious sanctity according to these forests. This is a protection measure taken by the people, local people. So this we call as environmental protection at the people level. The, they are also known as the pristine forest. One such move for the protection was taken as Chipko movements in the forests of Mandal village to conserve the natural ecosystem. Environment Protection Act provides the protection and improvement of the environment for the matters connected therewith. The environment includes water, air and land and interrelationship which exists among and between water, air and land and the human beings, the other living creatures, plants and microorganisms and their property. Now these are the measures which are taken at the government level there are many other steps which are taken at the global level, which we will be discussing in our next program. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmi Rula, for sharing information related to natural ecosystem, such as aquatic system, that is trash and marine, major Indian ecosystems and threatened ecosystems, such as mangrove, wetland, etc. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points, that is what you have learned. Aquatic ecosystems are freshwater bodies such as river and lake and marine habitats such as seas and ocean. Wetlands are ecotones between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems like marshes, swamps and mangroves. Ecotone is a zone of junction between two adjoining communities that is estuaries, mangrove and grassland. Natural ecosystems are threatened due to over exploitation of natural resources. Human activities are also leading to pollution and climate change. Measures are taken at the people groups from local level to national, international levels. Environment Protection Act is implemented to protect environment that includes air, water, land, human and all forms of life. We the human beings are responsible for the reduction of natural ecosystems. To protect our own species, it is essential to us to protect them. Therefore, to prevent the further destruction, people should be educated about the various methods. Dear learners, this is all about the part 2 of the lesson 6, that is natural ecosystem. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.